Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are going to build an ASP.NET Core MVC application that performs basic data access using Entity Framework Core. You will reverse engineer an existing database to create an Entity Framework data model. With clicks, connect to database. And Microsoft SQL Server. Continue. And in this server name, I will just write local db slash ms equal local db. So today I am going to do a local database, local db within pair of circular braces, ms sql local local db as the server name and the database name is master uh, m a s t e r and okay so the master database is now displayed under data connection in server explorer so if you click on view uh, server explorer is already open so i'll just click from there and um the the data connections where is my data connections connect to the server server explorer server explorer is this data connection okay local that's it local db master this one okay so I have got a script copied here on my Word document, so I'll just highlight it. Control C for copy, and then um, what I will do is right click on the database and um, select new query. Okay, waiting for the new query window to open. So I will just paste it, the copied code. Right. Um, right click on the query editor and select execute. So I've got this execute button here. I'll just click it with three rows affected. So my database is created okay. and it has got three insert entries for these three blogs so basically what this database does is it is a database known as blogging and it creates two tables blog and a post and blog has got a url as in varchar max and a primary key as pk block which is the blog id and post is having the post id as the um, identity key blog id Blog ID is a foreign key from this block table and content, which is a varchar of max, um, and title, which is another varchar, uh, field size maximum. And this is the primary key and the foreign key, uh, which is known as FK post blog blog ID, and which is the foreign key from block table that is the blog ID and references blog blog ID on delete cascade. All right, so now. Going to the next step, I'll have to create now a project, new project, and ASP.NET Core Web Application. And um, this time, my application name is if get started dot ASP.NET Core dot existing DB, and I will. Uh, everything else is all right and click on okay. Okay, now to this. It's creating the project. All right, so I'll have to make sure ASP.NET Core is 2.1. That's the 
ASP.NET Core Framework and uh, now I'll have to select the web application template, web application model view controller template and ensure no authentication, that's fine. So click on OK. Wait for the project to be created. Yes, the project has been created. And now it's time to create the entity framework model based upon our existing database. So we can just confirm the database, just refresh and see the tables. Uh, oh, what happened here? Just close this. Just refresh and look for tables. Oh, oh, where are my tables? Anyway, I won't bother about it at the moment. So what I will do is I'll just hide this, auto hide. And now I'll go to the entity framework model we have to create based upon the existing database. So I'll click tools as earlier. If you remember tools, NuGet package manager and click on the package manager console. So package manager console is open here and I have copied a package manager command, paste it over here and wait for things to happen. this okay right so it has given a warning but that should be all right and the the reverse engineer process created entity classes block.cs and post.cs so block.cs is created here and this is post.cs right so block.cs looks like this okay and post.cs looks like this all right now there is a DB context class which is blogging context here. This one, yeah. And the context here, this is the blogging context. This represents a session with the database and allows you to query and save instances of the entity classes. So just quickly going through this. So this is the warning actually to protect sensitive information in your connection string, you should move it out to the source code for guidance on storing connection string. Ideally, we'd like to store this connection string on the web config. Yeah. Now, next we'll have to register our context with dependency injection. So, the concept of dependency injection is central to the ASP.NET Core services such as the blogging context this one are registered with dependency injection during application startup components that require these services such as our mvc controllers are then provided these services via a constructor parameters or properties okay so we'll have to register and configure our context in startup.cs so i have got this startup.cs class and I'll have to use uh, using statements 
further down below and I can now go for this configure service I have to look and I have copied additional uh, connection string so I'll just copy over highlight the whole thing and write it over with the new code that I have got look at it it got the var connection and the connection string is here and the configure services class but in a real application you would typically put the connection string in a configuration file or environment variable for here only for the sake of simplicity we have defined it in the code right now we'll have to create controller and views so we've got a pre-built controllers folder and right click add controller so we'll use MVC controller with views using entity framework click on add so model class is blog and blogging context is the database data context class right and blocks controller and click on add That's it. Now I'll have to run the application. So control F5, start without debugging. It's the same thing. Start without debugging. Control plus F5. So it's build succeeded. So it comes up with this screen. And then I'll have to browse it to blogs. blogs yeah so I've got already these three blocks created through the code and I can create new just I'll have to give it an URI let me try to find out some blog URI okay okay so HTTP colon slash slash blogs dot sorry msdn dot com slash dot net hope it is not repeated dot net and create Oh, that's already there anyway uh, you can already always change it so it's uh, visual studio was also there uh, anyway it doesn't matter back to the list so it demonstrates that you know we have been able to create a block class and uh, add blocks and that's it thanks for watching um, if you have liked my video put your likes put your comments and to subscribe Thanks for watching.